All right, before you started. Ah, nice try. I like to disengage when you have no cooldowns. Engage. Nice. Well done. Combat be king. Better not miss. The objective is now. Easy high ground. I feel like if you want to use this TP strat, you should wait until they actually start walking in. Just camp your own TP, just sit here for a couple seconds. And if they kill the TP, then you walk in behind them anyway. Uh, and if they don't, if they leave the TP up, then uh, you can just take the TP when you feel like it, right? Um, it's like the like, I can wall draw where you sit in their spawn, right? Like you just you wait until the right moment, right? And in this case, it's even it's, yeah, it's even easier to get the, the right information on when you should go. So. Just, um, I like the idea, it's just you were way too early on. Nice, focus. Patient for cooldowns. We're waiting for cooldowns. Nice. While you're playing through. <laughs> Rolled. Okay, I don't... <laughs> Alright. I appreciate your dedication to the turrets. But I don't know if that if those two turrets were with... Uh, <laughs> were worth your slam. I appreciate the dedication. But like, I think punching these tanks... Or just like applying pressure to these tanks would be a lot more valuable than um, to your Ryan than like actually just killing the turrets for him because you guys are just about to die together instead. <laughs> I I admire you the dedication though and I respect it. OG Dilster. Is this like your your phone account or something? I need to close my window. It's getting too cold. But thanks for the follow. Uh, but yeah, uh, so in this case the drop punch is cool, but you shouldn't be charging the punch um, before you go into the TP. Like you charge, like charging the punch for the TP is specifically in the TP TP like clash because like I'm sure you know like you drop, you guys are all dropping together and then you punch them in the air, right? But in this case because you're dropping, right? Um, like you just have to punch too early, right? So you just charge the punch as you're dropping instead of charging a punch before you TP. I'm sure you already know this. One. I don't know why. I'm sure It's very awkward. TP's gone. Oh, rolled. I like that you didn't flank, by the way, because uh, it's kind of like, hard to time that flank if you go on the long flank. Nice. Speed. Just kind of taking small off angles, making it hard for them to like walk out the doors. Probably shouldn't have committed as hard as you did. Um, I'm sure you know this. Like once you get this kill and you get the beat, or like beat war off rather. Um, like I know you want to go in, and you look back and you see like your team seems to have an advantage, right? But like if you look a bit more closely, like your team is all running away from you. <laughs> so you just gotta chill for a bit, right? Just chill, right? If someone tries to walk out the door, you punch them, right? Um, Give all your ult to bail you out, but now you have your ult force. Almost definitely. Yeah, because like, you're just a little too impatient. Good ulti though. I've never seen that interaction before. Oh my god, he's in the stratosphere. Ooh! With TP. I'm gonna take him. Oh, that's right. Alright, let's all wrap up.
positioning. Just be ready for TP if they go past you in a really awkward spot. Um, I don't know what the rollout would be. I imagine you just like probably punch, then I don't know, slam down here where they're all dropping, and then uppercut, but then the committal. I don't know. Yeah, like you sort of have to expect this, right? Like this is what you would set up if they didn't have Symmetra, but because they have Symmetra, you sort of need to set up somewhere else. <laughs> Later. I don't think you needed to ult right then. Um, like, uh, they have no cooldowns, right? Or you have no cooldowns, which is, but you have full HP and you have some shield, right? So you're not at super at risk. So I think this this ult is a little ambitious, and ulting the Rhine is even more ambitious, right? You don't like the, the Rhine has shield. He's very rarely going to die to it unless he's bad. So most of the time, what you should do is just like come right back up here, right? <laughs> just reset up high ground somewhere, right? Um. I don't know if you can get on like these edges of the edge of the wall, but if you can get up there, even better, right? And then you just like find like you land somewhere high, and then you start charging, punch, and dropping, and looking for a better target, right? There's very little they can actually do about it. But, like this, ult, this this ult on the Rhine is just like overly optimistic, and he just immediately shatters you and makes it takes you for a ride. Beat, we just beat it. Oh boy. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> nice. Play Doom. Razor. Okay. Razor. Do you play any more Doom? Okay, so for Doom, uh, that was fine. Uh, just keep in mind that um, uh, you're like, just remember how the TP interactions work. Um, if they're going to TP past you, you don't want to set up on the on the old flank or on the on the the choke setup. And if they're going to, um, or uh, be at least be fully committed to it, um, or be ready, or have some kind of roll up prepared that will get you to point fast, right? Um, uh, or like, uh, and if you're going to TP punch, make sure you TP punch in, like relative, like you timed the, the TP. And the punch relative to when you're actually going to be able to punch. So if you're like, obviously, I don't know why I'm bringing that. You already know that. Uh, <laughs> you already get it. Um, then what else? Uh, and just be aware of when your team can go in. Um, generally speaking, you were pretty good about that. But there was that one moment when you went in, and uh, um, team was chasing a Rhine around the, the corners of the map. So wait, wait for that to happen. Go in if you need to. If you feel like you need to help them, but for the most part, you can just hold your position. Um, Going after that, that will save your ult. Um, and again, don't be afraid to use ult for high ground. Using ult for damage is fine, but you need to make sure it's like actually on on. It's going to be at least lead to some kind of damage, um, and or else the positioning with your base cooldowns is probably better. All right, let's take a look at your tracer. Oh my God, scrim. All right. We move. So I'm not a fan of going all the way around unless you expect to run into a tracer. So like you hang out here, if you don't hear or see any anything in regards to Somber Tracer uh, yet, then it's time to start going this way. Because you need to get back to the fight faster, and this fight is both very visible and too long, right? Whereas this path has more cover to work for you to work with to get to work yourself closer, right? This is just like very long. Kinda hard if they're paying any attention. They might not be, but Okay, I see where your plan is. Okay, this is okay as well. You have the mega behind you, but it's very difficult to see over the bridge and it's um it's difficult to push like a McCree, so especially when you know this McCree. I don't know if he did, but it's very difficult to like push this direction. It's it's better than this for sure. So this is a good move. It's just that um you you spent a blink to get here, so they know you're here now as well, and you're down a cooldown. So that that's a little less important. But they know you're here now. And they can pay more attention to it. Not that they will, apparently. Nice. Get that. Yeah, you need to get. It. <laughs> You gotta get out of there faster. Like again, the problem with this play wasn't that it was bad. The problem was that it was too late because your team already died, right? And that came to the fact down to the fact you went all the way around instead of just taking like once you secured the flank, just taking the shortest route in, right? Like, this is both shorter, 
which makes it faster and has better cover on the way in. And then you can like sort of work your way in. And even if you can't immediately go in the Zen, that's okay, right? As long as you're like applying a pressure to the sides. Or just generally living. Because if you live here, and like say your team dies immediately, like I, I think they got booped or something like that, then you can hang out here and just defend this side of the map and make it really hard for them to cap for a while, right? And if your ball and monkey, your, sorry, if your, <laughs> your monkey and your diva like give you some support, right? Like maybe your diva DMs you and then trades off with you, right? Or maybe comes in from the other side and like touches point when you back out, right? You can make it very difficult for them to cap and buy time for your team to come back. We sort of took the all in approach after going all the way around the map. That's like double whammy because it took a long time, so you die late. Um, and it resets all your map progress, right? Yeah, not a huge fan of this flank. Okay, though. Yeah, it just makes things kind of difficult. All the way around again. I kind of don't mind this because you have a, an Ana, but if the problem with going all the way around, so the thing about Ana is Ana is less good at supporting you in your flank, so it's harder to fight for them, right? But and so going all the way around can let you skip that, right? Like it lets you like dodge all your problems and then get on the back. The problem is if anyone contests you, you don't get any help, right? You don't have a Zen, um, and you're even more on an island. So like you're you're truly like fighting a one v two, one v three at that point, right? So if they know you're going this way, it's super super risky, and this guy's already looking for you, right? Like there's no way you're ever gonna beat him. Um, from this range, right? <laughs> like, his supports have to leave him alone for like a solid 10 seconds for you to outplay him. Uh, from this distance. And he's still looking for you, right? And this is because you showed this earlier, right? And now he's just staring you down. And you can't, you can't get any help, right? So I think playing a little bit closer to your team, and just like, waiting for your monkey to jump, and when your monkey jumps, you just hard commit for the back line, right? You spend all your blinks and fly in your bubble to keep you alive, your monkey's bubble to keep you alive. Um, fine. But, um, at least the best Again, right? Just like very risky. Work your way back here. Again, he's just staring you down. He's, he's literally not paying any attention. Anymore. Yeah, so what you want to do is save cooldowns for blink. Just chill with your monkey. Maybe like sort of mix up which side you're going for so he doesn't actually know which side you're on, right? And then when he jumps, like like triple blink over here or something, try and get over here and then like work and then like use this to like buy time and use your monkey and your cover to buy time for more blinks as you like try to whittle them down, right? That would be like a potential game plan. It would be necessarily a very good one, right? Uh, but it would be passable enough, right? Trying a little too hard to play self sustain, and this tracer with a harmony orb just comes to challenge you, and you're just sad, right? <laughs> Just harmony, what are you supposed to do, you know? Oh fine, you can just win the game apparently. Holy, you can just be better. <laughs> yeah, that's not something you want to rely on, right? Brave man. Ooh. Flash. Good man. Do you Somber actually hack all three packs? Uh, that's commitment. <laughs> that's commitment. You hacked that one too? Oh my god, she has. <laughs> oh my lord. She hacked all five packs. What a boss. Maybe too much of a boss. When you have all the packs hacked, you literally can fight anywhere. You don't you don't care anymore about where the uh, where like you actually take take a fight. Ooh. Yeah, so again, like, the fight moved very fast in this direction. You were in a great spot to just blink over and pinch from the back, but you went around again, right? You see how, like, you keep going way too far around, and you're not actually connecting with your team enough when the fight's when the fight's on. So sometimes this is fine because your team's about to go in, right? So that, that's when you pinch from the side, it's even better, right? So they're standing the bridge, the team goes in, then the team falls back, and you pinch from behind, right? That's great, right? But in this case, you've got to read the flow of the fight. Your team's not set up to fight forward. 
the back up, right? Like your monkeys in spawn. Your team is not going to make an aggressive play, which means the enemy team is going to push into point, especially with rally, right? They have rally going. So all you gotta do is be ready to post bomb them from behind, right? Because they're, they're, there's no reason, like, no sane people are gonna walk out. I mean, they might, but like, in that case, you just take the duel with them, right? And you can still watch this side, uh, but you need to be ready for the push, right? The push is gonna happen, right? And if you go all the way around, you're gonna be left behind. So you gotta read the flow of the fight a bit better. Sen was kind of waiting for you, right? But like, um, everyone else on the team just shoved onto point, and they just trans and kill your whole team, it's rally. Never got to use your pulse bomb in the way you'd like to. Oh my gosh, you actually got the mech. Pulse! Nice! Then. Oh, okay. Hey, we got it anyways. Oh, later. <laughs> later! So this is win, right? We'd go this way, right? Because their team's fault is. Oh, I guess. Actually, never mind. You can see it. Never mind. <laughs> I didn't realize that angle worked. What's up, Will? <laughs> you saw that dude, the diva? <laughs> this diva is not having a good day. Them in glorious slow motion. Guys, I'll touch. Got touch, guys. Don't worry about it. Any second now. Are you going back too far? Guys, I got touch. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. Any second now. Any second. Ready for battle. They're gonna add time, maybe we'll just start like this. Five, four, God, they just let it start. Wow. Okay. That diva's mentally destroyed, yeah, she's done. She's like, I'm not playing diva, I'm on uh Sigma now. <laughs> I like this. Like normally, if you if you can get in here, you try, right? But your team lost control early, so you swing out wide. I really like this. Apply a lot of pressure, and now, okay. so now you just gotta sort of play between the two until you can figure out which one you can actually go. Your Ryan commits it this way, so then you can start thinking about this way, right? Obviously, the Sigma's still holding it, but like your Ryan could theoretically just like shove it right now with you. Um, yeah. yeah. I would really like to see you just like backstab now. Yes. You don't need to play that. It's trying a little too hard to play it to stay alive here. So push and you back up. You see that literally no one's looking at you, right? So at this point, it does not matter if you die, because in the amount of damage and chaos you will do, it, it, and as the fight's starting, because the enemy the fight is on, right? It's like basically on, right? It's like massive. So you just need to walk in, get the biggest like amount of damage you can, and like double conk. If that doesn't keep you alive, um, then by that they'll devote enough resources that your team will probably win. If they can't win off that, then like somebody made a mistake somewhere, right? But this is not a mistake, because they're all walking to point right now. So you see like you're trying to assassinate from range and using cover, instead of just like walking into them and then double conking. <laughs> you can like literally chuck a conk into them and then like walk into somebody, conk again, and try to land on high ground if you can, right? Um, or just like fall back after the double conk. But you're playing this way too passive. Not way too, but like relatively. And now like you're getting scared of this guy and they've just run down your team. Like your team's actually already just been run down and died, right? The relative impact was just too small. <laughs> Normally I don't advocate for that because I talk about holding angles and stuff like that all the time. But in this case, like their whole team was fully committed, you just gotta swing in, right? You gotta make your impact on the fight before it's too late. Rack or Doom, actually. Alright. Oh, 
a good uh, adaptation. I really like doing the Symmetra in general. Um, just the ability to just like go through all the stuff she wants to compose but way faster than hers. Or like actual one shot ability. Uh, I guess if the call is a disengage is fine. But like, just remember, like, if your team's the fight's on, the fight's on, right? The end. Nice. I'm not a huge fan of retaking when the when the the guy is just staring at you here. <laughs> the like, I like I like the retake, right? But the problem is, you see this guy and he's just sitting there, right? So either dump all your cooldowns to try and kill him, right? You like you punch, then like you try and uppercut him and then like kick him off the high ground and then slam him and maybe kill him, right? Or at least force all his cooldowns on himself, or you just ignore him and punch across, right? Um, but like I think trying to like go past him is a little. You burn all your clones, you have no escape, you just gonna die. You didn't get to make the best of a bad situation, but like, I think if you just like, looked at him, it would probably be fine. So I'm realizing everything I was talking about with the Junkrat was really Doomfist. <laughs> I was just being like, be more committal, all in for kills, do more, like, do as much, cause as much chaos as you can, right? Like, so basically what I was saying is that scenario, because you need to make your mark on the fight as fast as you can, you just need to play like a Doomfist. Because Doomfist, like, he gets that one moment that defines his fight a lot of the time, right? Um, and for the Junkrat in that situation, you had that one moment, right? And you don't always get that moment as Junkrat, but in that case, no one was looking at you, and you were all and you were and they were all pushing in, right? And you were walking in from behind them. Um, so in that case, that's your moment to be the Doomfist. And not every character gets to be the Doomfist very often, so that's what you always have to do it whenever you take it whenever you can, right? If you die for it. This moment looks familiar. Oh. Yeah, once you got flashed, it's not often you die in that situation, but I think when you got flashed there, you should probably should ult it. Um, no point trying to save, maximize your cooldown value, because like, you're flashing the air with the McCree here, like, they're all looking at you now, and like, normally, like, you would like, uppercut, shoot, shoot, and like, slam, and that would like, because like, you're moving around so much and they weren't ready for it, live there, right? But because you got flashed, they, you're in the same place for longer, uh, and like, that buys some time to look at you, so going for a slam there is like, a little bit overly optimistic. Map, I like it. You have my thanks. My ultimate is charged. Team should be telling you where they are. Or all white room it looks like. Drop punch. Or actually we're waiting out. Okay, fine. Passive. Literally just won the fight. Never mind, your team dies tonight. Ah! Stop! <laughs> Stop trying to ult the Rhine. I don't care if he's low. It's a Reinhardt. Did he go to the high ground? He actually took the time to go all the way up there. The mad lad. Um, so for you, biggest things, um, uh, was mostly just like, uh, well, Lee Jong at least for you. Uh, mechanically it was fine. I think sometimes like, uh, decision on when to like retake and when to not was a little questionable. Uh, with like the
Oh, I'm, okay, I think your decision to retake was fine, but you actually had to commit to the retake. And just because you can't punch that guy on the high ground doesn't mean you can't, like, punch at him and then uppercut him, right? And just dislodging him is good enough because, like, he's alone and you're a Doomfist, right? <laughs> um, so, like, don't be afraid to all, use all your cooldowns to, to, to kill him, right? Or to, like, make him really, really sad, right? Uh, <laughs> and um, when you're playing Junkrat, like, you, did, you made a really good play where you, like, you went top left, top right, sorry, they were, they were, they blocked you off, they came too fast, so then you went back around, you took the off angle, you made them go to point, and then you went back to high ground, right? That was a really good move, you just didn't commit hard enough. Um, so on maps that are that small, and the angles become a lot less, not important, but they become a lot, um, their impact is felt a lot faster, right? So, you don't really want to grind out the fight with the angle, like you would on, like, Ash on, like, Blizzard World or something. You want to take the angle and instantly use it, right? You For maximum value, like, it's like a flank at that point, right? Even though it's not really that far away from the original path, right? It's a flank. Um, so in that time, you want to get maximum value. So as Doomfist, you did a lot better job of that, which is why like your Doomfist is like generally more effective um, that round. And um, but just be care uh, careful about like uh, just be careful about being too greedy. Um, like trying to walk underneath the bat, probably not probably not the best. <laughs> um, using your alt, uh, not using alt immediately if you got flashed, probably also not the best, right? Like do everything. Like the goal is always to stay alive, right? You don't have impact when you're dead. Um, but uh, if you can have impact. At the exchange of your in exchange for your life, like you blow all like all your your stuff, like your cooldowns, your damage, blah blah blah, then dying isn't so bad, right? Um, as long as you as long as you've already had your impact. But if you haven't had your impact yet, like you, you made your flank, but you didn't kill anything, right? Like just alt and live, right? Um, and also stop ulting in rhymes. <laughs> Good rhymes won't die to that very often. Um, all right, yeah, that should wrap it up. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and uh, I hope this was helpful.